when we think of studying abroad we think of all the countries we think of usa uk canada australia we in fact think of europe as well and when we say europe we think france germany one country we do not talk about is the netherlands and it's an amazing country we're going to talk about the best university of netherlands that's university of amsterdam look how beautiful that looks like that's so beautiful right so we're going to talk about the fees here the placements here scholarships salaries everything that you need to know before coming to netherlands and if you're deciding where to study one thing you definitely need to know if you're planning to come to europe if you think of france you will have to learn french if you think of italy you will have to learn italian with germany you can probably live with if you're planning to go for an it job you can live with not knowing german but with netherlands or sweden you're comfortable because nordic countries as well as netherlands are completely fine with english you do not need to learn dutch in fact you do learn dutch it will help you if you don't it's fine so that's the most important point of netherlands you do not need to learn the language you're fine with english i just saw a student pick up flowers here That student has flowers. Like this is such a beautiful country. Okay, I thought about taking a break and talking about all the details here when I'm sitting right outside University of Amsterdam. So when we talk about Europe in general, the average salaries are not comparable to US because when you graduate from a US college, you're expecting a salary of hundred thousand dollars, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. On the other hand, the European salaries are slightly on the lower end. You will be expecting fifty thousand to eighty thousand euros when you graduate from a European university. But that's not the case with University of Amsterdam. After you graduate from University of Amsterdam the average salary that you would be expecting would be crossing 100000 euros yeah so that's somewhere around 80 lakh rupees which is comparable to a us university so you get the lifestyle of european people and the salary of american people that's what university of amsterdam gives you but then you would be thinking why doesn't everyone study at university of amsterdam because the acceptance rate is just 4% but for indians getting into university of amsterdam would be way much more easier you'll ask me why the average gmat score to study at university of amsterdam is 6 650 650 is what an indian can get essay like gmat 650 is nothing so for an indian getting into university of amsterdam is way easy but people don't apply for it just because people don't know about it and that's why you follow me i mean you have subscribed to my channel right if you've still not subscribed to my channel i don't know what are you doing like the kind of content that i'm giving just hit the subscribe button guys let's go Now one more comparison that we definitely have to talk about is the number of students here. Think about it. In the United States, 2 lakh 50 thousand Indian students went to study. It's an amazing place. So many students ended up going there. Canada, another 2 lakh 50 thousand. UK, 1 lakh 40 thousand. Ah, Australia, 80 thousand. Now guess how many students ended up coming to Netherlands? Just to give you a hint, the number is less than ten thousand. You can use the comment section to let me know how many students ended up coming to Netherlands. Now remember one thing: whenever you're planning to study abroad, keep this thing in mind that when you're competing for jobs, you are never competing with the local people for jobs. You're always competing with the international talent for jobs because they're the citizen of that country. Now you have to explain to the company that is hiring you that you are better than the other people who are looking for this job, and you're always competing. competing against international students here in netherlands you don't find a lot of international students so the chances of applying and getting jobs just becomes easier that's why students in canada keep on crying why because they are competing against a lot of international students if they had citizenship they would have not been crying that's how it helps you do not face a lot of competition when you are applying for jobs here in netherlands so if you're coming for a stem related field i don't think you will find a difficulty in finding jobs okay talking about average salaries a masters would lead you to a salary of 101000 euros which we talked about after llm it would be 84000 executive mba $79000 doctorate $77000 and a masters of finance $75000 there are some masters that are usually considered to be a good idea in netherlands i will be leaving a list of those in the description and i feel like this no this is not a beautiful place to sit let's sit somewhere else 
Now you might say Murad the average salaries of other courses are not exciting me that much. You correct to a certain extent. You also need to know that this fees of studying at University of Amsterdam is basically one third of what you would be spending in an average college in USA. In an average college in USA you would be spending somewhere around 30 40 lakh rupees. In University of Amsterdam you will be spending somewhere around 12 to 16 lakh rupees for your masters. That's why it might just be a smart idea and we will also be talking about the scholarship Now if you're planning to come here there are three scholarships that you have to definitely apply for. First one is the Orange Tulip scholarship. It covers 25% to 100% of your tuition fees. Now this is for entire Netherlands. You can apply to any university in Netherlands with this scholarship. But if you're planning to come to Netherlands, either come to University of Amsterdam, Rotterdam or or Erasmus University or Delft, but only come to these good universities. I see some students go to below average universities here. Guys, that that that, that does, just doesn't make sense. Why? If you have the chance to study here. Okay, continuing with the scholarships. The other two scholarships that you have to apply for. The second one is the Amsterdam Science Talent Scholarship, where you get fifteen thousand euros for an MSc application. And the third one is the Julia Herrite Jarasmus Adolfs Fund. Okay, sorry, I know I just messed the name, but. This is the scholarship that you have to apply for, and this scholarship also covers fifteen thousand euros towards your tuition fees and another ten thousand euros, around ten lakh rupees towards your living expenses. Talking about living expenses, how much are the living expenses in Netherlands? So, if you're planning to rent a place towards the university area, which is like very centrally located, you would be paying somewhere around seven hundred euros for an apartment. Yes, it's really expensive, guys. I know. Oh, I forgot my bag. Let's take my bag. <sighs> So in Amsterdam since the university is very centrally located you will be living somewhere near the city center and you will be paying somewhere around 700 euros per month let that sink in 700 euros which is somewhere around 63000 rupees which means for a year you would be paying 8400 euros which is somewhere around 8 lakh rupees yeah so the living expenses are really high here in Amsterdam and for your other expenses you will be paying somewhere around 500 euros per month but again the best thing about Netherlands is you can work for part time and cover all your living expenses so that here is possible okay let's talk about the application requirements the application season is now open so you can definitely apply for the university and yeah if you're watching this video later i mean that means you did not subscribe to my channel you don't deserve i mean you do deserve because now you've stumbled upon to this channel talking about the application requirements you need to have an undergraduate degree for a master's degree your gpa should be 7 gmat minimum score is 560 gre is 5152 you need a letter of reference you need statement of purpose personal statement resume or cv for ielts you can have a 6.5 but no band less than 6 For TOEFL, you need to have a 92 score, nothing below 22, and the fees ranges from 8.7 lakh to 9.9 lakh for a UG course. But some of the PG courses can be expensive. The PG course can go up to 40 lakh rupees. Usually, a master's course here is for 20 lakh rupees. But some of them can go really high. But think about it. In USA, you will be spending twice the money. Now, talking about the pros of coming to Netherlands. First thing is come for a research-oriented course. I know many of my friends would want to come for a management course here. I honestly am not a big fan of coming to Netherlands for a management-oriented course unless you plan to become an entrepreneur because the salaries are not as great. I do understand the point of not having a lot of competition. but then it's definitely not the best place to come if you're thinking of management germany is definitely a country that you should be considering even though i just said that you need to learn german in germany it still is better because of the salaries and the kind of jobs that you get second pro of coming to university of amsterdam would be definitely its qs ranking and the alumni network everyone that you talk to knows about university of amsterdam you go out you look for jobs everyone knows about university of amsterdam so the alumni network and the name for itself is very strong here in netherlands in totality which course would i apply for if i am planning to come here communication or mass media related courses or anything to do with research because netherlands is known for ground breaking research so if you're coming for research amazing idea and if you're planning to start a startup netherlands is the hub of all the entrepreneurs that are coming to europe if you plan to set up a business in europe you have to come to netherlands no other country is good for you i know i talked about all the pros but you are on an unbiased channel so we 
also have to talk about the cons. First major con of coming to University of Amsterdam would definitely be the housing. Every student that I talk to is facing this issue. The housing is getting more and more expensive. 700 euros, yes, you can find a place, but it will be a bit difficult to find that 700 euro place. You might end up spending 800, 850 euros. So the cost of living is definitely a major issue right now, at least in Amsterdam for students. Second problem with University of Amsterdam is it's expensive, more expensive than any other University of Amsterdam. You're planning to come to Delft, you're planning to come to Rotterdam, you plan to come to Erasmus, all the other universities which are very good are very cheap. When I say very cheap, very inexpensive. I don't know why people don't like the word cheap. It's cheaper, right? But yeah, bringing the mic closer to me. Yes, it's more expensive than any other university, at least twice as more expensive than any other university here in Netherlands. The of studying in Netherlands that we did not talk about was the post-study work visa. You only get a one-year post-study work visa if you plan to come to Netherlands. Now, I know you'll be thinking, oh, one year is bad. But then universities, after completing your degree, you can come for another degree, which I don't think is a smart idea. Look research part is very good so if you're planning to come for research that's a good idea but companies also do sponsor you for a job and as soon as you get a blue card eu blue card you're fine living in europe one good thing about europe which we did not talk about in comparison to us is the long-term settlement prospect if you live in Europe, in Netherlands for five years, you will be eligible for citizenship. So as a final recommendation, I would want you to keep your mind open when you're applying to universities. Don't be specific on applying only to Canadian school, Canadian schools or British schools, British schools. They're not usually a good investment. They were good investment 10, 15 years ago. Now that's not the case. You can look for other countries, look for other options. They definitely can be more lucrative. And I also want you to know one very important thing. The general level of intelligence here is very low in Netherlands or any European country. They say that the power is very low. If Hindustan is here, they will give them a page. When I say the word page, they will give them a page. They will not know what to do. If we start using this power, we will have a lot. If we start using this power, we will be so good. We will have such a great life here. I don't know why we are behind some countries. I don't know why we are behind some countries. I don't know why we are behind some countries. USA, UK, Canada. Probably because the previous generation of people who were behind some countries, they ended up making a lot of money there. And now we want to follow their footsteps. Some countries are really good options. Netherlands and Germany would definitely be two such countries I would recommend. Germany definitely because of its free education and Netherlands because it just is an amazing place with the kind of opportunities that you get and the low competition that you get in terms of some universities it's definitely amazing. Also I had to talk a lot about party culture and the fun that you get to have. It's a student city Amsterdam but maybe in some other video. And if you like this video do let me know which next university campus would you want me to talk about. I'll be doing that. Also yeah guys if you did like this video maybe you would want to watch a video on HEC Paris here HEC Paris rank one in Europe and yeah please hit the subscribe button if you like the content